So, hey everybody, it's Mike with Sarah.biz, Search Engine Ranking Rules. And today we're speaking with Keith Reynolds from Publio, uh, Publi.io, uh, regarding content marketing and how it relates to search engine optimization, but also uh, some insights that uh, Keith has. Keith, I'm going to let you talk about yourself because you're better at it than I am. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to reconnect and I appreciate the opportunity to be on your, your show. I wish you all the best with it. Um, so thank you. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, in marketing my whole career. I got involved with my first website back in the mid-90s and uh, I've written and produced over 100 websites over the years. and. What I found that I really love to do is help people figure out their content strategy. You know, who's their audience? What kind of content do they uh, create so that they attract people and they represent their business properly? And, uh, and I've come up with a formula that I, I work with people on to help them think that through. And we have uh, uh, also a class and worksheets and uh, my, my partner, uh, that I work with uh, some of the training on calls them fun sheets um, but it's it's uh, gathering all the information so that uh, when you go online you you have a good idea that, that this is gonna work okay I think a um, couple things uh, first name drop a little bit who, who have you worked for that people are gonna recognize and, and you know give yourself some credibility sure so uh, I started my early career working for IBM. I was with them for seven years. Um, amazing place to start your career. You get great training. Um, I've also worked for Apple. Uh, I've worked uh, in their business to business uh, uh, part of the retail operations. So I sold the Apple products and services to area companies up where I live. And I have also then uh, been in the agency and consulting world. I've worked with companies like Kodak and Vodafone and a number of other you know, mid-sized companies you probably haven't heard of, but we help make them famous in their space. Nice. All right. Well, that's what local business uh, marketing is all about, right? Being True with that, right? Right. Being famous within your space. <clears throat> yep. And you can do that either by location, which is a lot of what you do with local Right? But you can also do it by the focus of your business. So it might be that you have an area of expertise. And so uh, you, instead of being local, you've got a global audience, but you're very narrow in what you're, you're good at. Right, right. Which uh, with the expansion of the internet and the endless stream of opportunities for marketing and advertising, you kind of have to get a uh, niche in your, your, your approach. Okay, but, rich is in the niches. <laughs> yeah, rich is in the niches. So um, you were showing me earlier your kind of seven point concept uh, related to your uh, master class and some of the uh, consulting that you do. Uh, hold on a second, let me turn off this other phone. No matter how advanced technology we get, we're still going to have phones. Right. Um, all right, what was I saying? Okay, good. So you've worked for some, you know, some pretty solid companies, uh, produced a lot of results for those companies, and now you're uh, running uh, Publio and offering a master's class as well as, are you doing one-on-one -on -one consulting as well? Like, you, you know, they don't yeah, have to so take your class, you'll... you'll um, so I've, I've always believed that no matter how many people are on the internet, you probably only need 50 or 500 or 5,000 people, right? And there's over 4 billion people on the internet. So when you create content, you want it to be, to, to matter, like to be an interesting book, right? Or, an, or a great movie. It, they know their audience and you don't appeal to everybody. So the, the key is to start with who's your audience. And what's your objective for that audience? Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, that really ties into SEO. What I've learned uh, a lot from my work with you, um, that SEO is really about finding those keywords, those questions, and the concepts that your customers are interested in. And right. if you can represent yourself as an expert in that, mm -hmm. um, either by location or by focus, that um, it, you can build an audience on the internet because of that scale, because there's 4 billion on the internet, you right. can find that 50 or 500 or 5,000. 
Um, right. And, and that consistency and quality really count because people are surfing very quickly and they want to know that you can help them. And if they do, you know, the internet behavior is they lurk. And if they think that you can help them, they're going to reach out to you. So, right. so content marketing, also known as inbound marketing, um, is about putting your expertise out there and all of the elements that are going to connect with somebody. Yeah, uh, 100% agree. Um, that's part of like why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Uh, it's, this is more about getting you referrals because, uh, folks, I'm I'm not really open for consulting at this point, but Keith is. So. Um, <clears throat> Let's uh, let's you know. Let's go over that uh, seven points that you were talking about er earlier related to content marketing and how you you use your content and your expertise to drive people to your website, to get them to contact you, to make a purchase of your products or sales, uh, and also just on goal notes, you know, it's not always all about just making the sale. It's it's about that relationship and that trust because someone may read your stuff like it and take some information that's useful but what will often happen is you know they'll wind up referring you to someone else that's right they, i think one of the key points that you're highlighting is that um the internet is a give to get kind of place and if you're generous with your material and your knowledge and you approach it like you're training and helping people um, you are because there's four billion on on the internet, and because people have interests in specific things, they may not be buying, but they can certainly come along and learn something and refer you to somebody else. And then maybe six months or a year or two years down the road, they remember you. Right. And so if if you establish that kind of presence on the internet, um, you'll you'll be attracting people, and it it's really comes from a place of generosity. Yeah, nice phrase. Uh, Being generous so, with your your time and your content in your pr productions, uh, whether that's a blog post or what have you. All right, sorry. <clears throat> so your publisher's mo. Let's take a look at this. Sure. So I came up with this idea after having built a, a website for a company uh, at the division of a company, and we they had a million dollar product. Uh, there weren't very many companies that were going to buy their product, um, you know, at a million dollars. But we found 57 sales okay, qualified it was, leads. It was literally a million dollar product. It was literally from including the software, the installation, the maintenance contract, um, the their clients. So it was a <laughs> you're right. A packaging, it was a packaging management system. If you think of like a big company like. Johnson and Johnson or General Foods that sells in 140 countries and has 47 products and then each country has a different label and and every time you make a change on a package it would um, it would create another skew in their system right so keeping track of all the labels and packaging and legal requirements it's a nightmare for a global company and this company had a end-to-end -end process management for companies that had hundreds of, and thousands of SKUs and had to keep track of them. And then when you, you know, take a, take a product offline, you've got to remove it and take it out and, but yet keep track of it because the, there may be a regulator that is going to refer back to you and want to know things. So okay. all of that process is huge. So it was a very wow. expensive product. So when you find 57 customers, Right, you've now got a pipeline filled with fifty-seven million dollars in potential revenue. Right, and we did that by creating an online magazine about packaging, and we started. You know, we we basically were journalists that covering the packaging industry and make, telling interesting stories about packaging, and uh, so the you established thing, yourselves as the authority. Is, we established is, right and i did it in the background for my customer right? right so we we had their head of marketing uh was doing public speaking about this we were doing webinars that we you know pushed from the website um and and the at the end of the year they sold the division of the company for eight times the original offer. And one of the key drivers was the acquiring company wanted to buy that online magazine because it had generated all the leads. 
Nice. And my this was 2015, and my head was like, <clears throat> boom! Wait a minute, that that's just like Sumner Redstone doing a, a media company deal with Disney, but instead of selling advertising, we're trying to get leads. There's an economic value proposition to creating content on the internet, and. And you can value that at an enterprise level, not just how, how much sales pipeline you have. So I came up with the idea that a publisher, what a publisher does is very similar to what you need to do now on the internet. And that's build an audience and then monetize it. But instead of selling an advertisement, you're putting a lead in the pipeline. And if you know how many people that you, how many leads you need to close a deal, you can actually figure out how big an audience you need for your website, right? right? And and you have, as in bucket number seven here, an ROI model. But let's start at the top. Okay, let's start at the top. All right, so this uh, website we created, for I was working for an agency. I was the account exec strategy guy uh, on the project. And uh, the project was called Chief Packaging Officer. And packaging people are not... You know, they're not on the path, fast path to becoming a, a CEO. They get measured on saving a tenth of a penny on cardboard. Right, you know, right. They are engineers. I mean, it's an amazing industry. Uh, having dove in and worked in that space for a couple of years, um, that was pretty amazing to learn. But when we came up with the idea of the chief packaging officer, it had emotional resonance with people because... And this is the name of the... The magazine? The name of the magazine with Chief Packaging Officer. There's okay. no such thing, or there wasn't at the time. And and um, so we, we kind of made a splash, and we were catchy, right? So we had this North Star idea, and it really communicated that, that people in packaging are very valuable, right? It's that last moment of truth in the consumer's hand. If there's a, a recall on a product because it's mislabeled, it can drop the stock price by 20%. Right. 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 So all of these reasons why packaging is valuable and, and yet they're the Rodney Dangerfield of of a company. Right. They, it, it really resonated. And that's them that's some limelight. It, for it, you put them in the limelight. Exactly. Right. And that's right. that's interesting that you put the you you put the guy who usually gets just overlooked and it's just like, oh, yeah, put it in a package, Bobby. You know, exactly. make, make a box for it, Joe. Make it a box. Right. And so that's the kind of thing you can get really creative with a North Star idea. I've, I've worked with somebody else that, you know, they were an integrator um, of marketing automation systems. And how do you differentiate themselves? Well, they turned out that they really like being a coach. So the content that we, the content strategy we came up with was everything was like a playbook. And they talked about things in, in teamwork and coaching. And it, okay. It totally changed the way they talked about the company. So it's really important to have something that you believe in yourself and is going to connect with your audience. From okay. that, you build a, an editorial strategy. So that typically in a publishing industry, that would be a content calendar, right? And we would, on the content calendar, come up with names and titles of articles and videos. And we use SEO research, the keyword research, to understand the keywords and concepts and questions that people ask, and then we write articles about those, right. driven off the research. So let's just, <clears throat> you've been talking in, in just, uh, you know, bigger corporate terms, a million dollar product, right? That's so right. Uh, I just wanna reel it back a little bit. And as we go through, let's uh, <clears throat> let's talk about this in the context of say a, a, a local barbecue shop or restaurant. Perfect, you and know? I'll say also yesterday, I spoke to a group of, um, people who were working on their personal brand. So mm -hmm. they, some of them were consultants, a couple of them were in transition. And I did the same thing and said, okay, I'm an individual. How do I, you know, have a personal brand and how do I have a content strategy for that? So let's, let's today, let's do it on the barbecue. So yeah, the sick. North Star idea might be um, uh, the Connecticut cowboy, right? Okay. Come so up with... What's the like barbecue Connecticut style? Cowboy, right, the Connecticut. Is this the name of the restaurant, the Connecticut Cowboy? Could be, or it could be that it's a, just a barbecue restaurant located in Connecticut. But I just was coming up with that to Let's pull it out of my ears. Let's here. Go Connecticut Cowboy. Um, and then your editorial strategy might be that you know, out of this idea of generosity, you might give some of your recipes away. Right. And you might have a whole channel on barbecue that you know goes out 
to the pit and we interview the pit master whenever they're doing a you know a pig roast or whatever and get right. his secrets and okay. got it so car connecticut, connecticut cowboy and our content's going to be all about the connecticut cowboy um maybe we act actually have a host or the restaurant owner has got a cowboy hat and bingo what have you and so he's kind of our focus or she is and yep. uh we're going to give some recipes away which people love right like I, how many times you've been at a restaurant and i don't ever do this but i've been with people who are like hey can i get that recipe for that and some restaurant owners are like no piss off right. uh, keep come back and buy it again but some other uh one successful really successful uh, restaurant owner i knew uh back in maryland uh yeah he, he share the recipe be like yeah, there absolutely you, go. you know because there, there's a little secret sauce that he does you know but like here it right. is. you leave a couple things out but in general you teach people and then you develop right. loyalty right. and so a, an editorial strategy for a, a barbecue business is obviously going to be different than someone else and and yet it can reflect the the values and and the ideas of the of that restaurant owner right and then you can use that plus your um your SEO research and maybe some customer interviews and you start coming up with ideas for videos, right? right. And who knows, maybe you'll even catch on and become an internet meme, right? right? right. Well, one thing um, I've, been, I've been finding like uh, with Dirt Killer who I, I'm doing, you know, the, is in the videos, people are uh, in the videos were sort of ending of the, and is there anything else you'd like us to talk about? And if somebody will ask me a question related to the video and I'll answer it in the comment section, but then I started asking commenters, is there something else you'd like to learn? And people are responding back. And so that's also contributing to my editorial calendar, there you go. what we're going to be working on next and what's important, what's priority. And so, yeah, so just, you gotta get started is the first thing, have your North it. Star idea as you said, then your editorial strategy, and it doesn't have to be perfect all the way mapped out, but a general thing. Yep. One thing I do want to say on strategy is commitment, <laughs> you know, because you got to commit to uh, getting stuff out there. I recommend for all small local business owners that they try to publish something at least once a week, mm -hmm. at the very least, you know, at the very, very least once a month. And if you can't commit to that, you probably got to commit to hiring somebody. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a great point. And we're going to get to that when we get to ROI model. All right. Um, so uh, let, let's go on from the editorial strategy, right? That's based on a calendar. Once you start putting things on a calendar, you can figure out who you're going to hire, who's going to do the work. Right. right? And um, uh, so so then once you've you've created the content, you've got to distribute the content. And I view social media sites as a place not to put your content, but rather to tell people that you have content and to come back to you. And I'm a big proponent of an idea called a content hub right. where you put all of your content on your website and get all the SEO uh, value, but then you go out to LinkedIn or Facebook and you might, if you have a 20 minute interview with somebody really interesting, you take a a 30 second clip of that and you put it on Facebook and say for the full interview, come back to my website. Right. And you can right. do so that with, with your articles too. Like you put a teaser out there, drive people back because, um, <clears throat> and, and, and how that relates to SEO is because you got the click and it, presumably you have Google analytics and, you know, uh, uh, Google says that they don't use that information, but you know, dwell time, how long is somebody on your site? How, yep. how often are they engaging on your site, whether they're coming, you know, through Google or they're coming someplace else, Google has access to that information and it makes your site sticky. Um, so then that's an important factor in, in SEO. It helps them understand that there's value that, that it, they're, their logic is if somebody comes and spends five minutes on a site and the average is a minute or 30 seconds that and you get enough of those five minute visits, they're going, hey, this is right. I mean, Google valuable. says they don't track it and they're, they're not and that they're completely independent from one another. But my personal opinion is, uh-huh, sure, because <laughs> <laughs> why would why would Google not use that information is, is my overall opinion. And so for the SEOs who want to go hater on me, OK, there's the comment box, but that's just my personal opinion <laughs> about it. <clears throat> I, I think also it's they may use it in the aggregate 
Uh, they may also use it to assign a value to you, but they're not looking at your business and publishing that information. Yeah, no, they're not publishing it. I just it, it's right. it's. I think it's probably used too, but um, I mean, why else? It, you know, in your Google Analytics, you see that information. Why would they give you that information if they're not using it? It just doesn't make sense. Right, right. So anyway, sorry to jump in there. No, um, that's all right. So we're up, we're up to number three, right? Bucket right, number three, right, and yeah. that's putting your content out there. Email is another way that you can publish your content and mm -hmm. sending out your email newsletter and then having clicks to come back to your website. And, you know, the, the bottom line is you always want to have a little another offer uh, when someone arrives. So if they read a blog at the bottom, give them something else to do. Maybe they'll take a second click. Right. right? So that's bucket number three. And I used to have bucket number four and bucket number three all in one, but I, I separated it out because for most businesses, and my experience is more B2B, I, I have some consumer experience, but much of your, um, much of the, the business that you drive comes from your ability to participate in, in a community, even for that barbecue, right? You, right. you, uh, contribute to the, the you set up a, a, a booth at the, at the county fair, you contribute to local organizations and you, you know, give big discounts to nonprofits if they use you for catering. Being involved in the community is the essence of being in business. And so I separated it out. The other thing I realized is that nobody wants to talk to a salesperson, but everybody wants to be interviewed. And so if you attend these events and you say, hey, we're doing a, a local, um, we're doing our annual clam bake down at the barbecue pit, and we're going to be interviewing small businesses. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, come down to our event, and, and um, we'd like to interview you for our show, right? That's a pitch that people love, and they don't think of you as a salesperson, even if it's your salesperson giving, making that offer. So, right, hold on, I'm going to wrap my head. Well, small business. So, like, just back, back to uh, Connecticut. <clears throat> Connecticut Cowboy. They, right. so Connecticut Cowboy is doing a, you know, pit at some, you know, school fundraiser or whatever for, you know, their their kids. There you, you know, go. Uh, PTO and they, you know, volunteered and they're giving away uh, an afternoon of barbecue. In that situation, I mean, the pit, the what they would probably do on that with that interview model that you just talked about would be, yeah, the chef's cooking and talking and so forth. But the, the interview really would be the review. Like, Hey, how'd you like that? It could be that, it but it, it could also be something. Um, let, let's go back to B2B, even though you're a consumer organization, you, you know, most of your revenue comes from people coming and eating at your restaurant, but you might do catering and you're doing the local fundraiser and a, somebody comes by your site and you find out that they're the owner of the local plant and, or the, they're, they're the general manager of the local plant. And wouldn't it be great because you know they do catering instead of saying, hey, we do catering. You want my menu? Buy my stuff. I mean, my buy my stuff. You say, we have a taste off competition and we want to, I, what, I'm making this up as I go along here, but right. And we'd love to have you on our, on our social media. Uh, can I, in, can I interview you after you eat the, eat our barbecue, right? Whatever you invite them to become part of your content is the key point. Right. Okay. And now you're building relationships and that's right. different in, in community and events work than it is in, in publishing things on social networks. And I found it to be enough of a difference, but generally they're, they're both the same publishing, promotion, distribution, community events is all about your outreach. Right. Okay. Got it. All right. So then the next one, bucket number five is marketing automation. And there are tools like HubSpot, SharpSpring, Salesforce plus Pardot. Yeah, there's probably 50 of them. Marketo, there's millions of them. And you know what? They all do the same thing. Right. The, the, some are different this way, some are different that way. At the end of the day, you need some basic functionality like email marketing, drip campaign marketing, which is a series of emails um, that go out automatically, landing pages, chat bots. Right. All right. So let's, let's just take the drip marketing and tie it back in with... Uh, uh, Connecticut Cowboy. All righty. 
right? So I've got somebody there, they've tasted it, they let me interview them, they loved it, yada, yada. <clears throat> or even they said, uh, well, the, the, it's a little too vinegary, uh, what else you got, whatever. Anyway, yeah. you can engage with them on a personal level. Uh, so then you could probably be like, hey, well, if you like that, um, you know, here's a coupon code, just go to this you know, QR code right here over on my, my POS, you know, uh, stand here to scan this QR code, enter your email, and you'll get an automatic coupon. So now they're in your system. And if you've got a that's good the key. automated system, well, now they're in there and you can set up a drip campaign that's going to email them once a month just saying, hey, you know, come on, you didn't, you, you, you know, you used your coupon, you didn't use your coupon, or here's the exactly. latest recipe, or here's the next event we're going to be at. And so that's what you're talking about with automation and that's probably one of the easier automations to set up, especially for like a restaurant, right? Once it's set up, it kind of just is. And then that same thing could also actually just be permanently applied at the restaurant, especially in the waiting Correct. area, right? Like, and, sure and that's what one of the keys of marketing automation is no matter where your lead comes in from, you want to quickly convert it into that marketing automation system and then treat them all the same way. Now you might have different segments. You might have right. your corporate catering versus your your uh, regular customers, um, right. right? And and so, but at the same time, they're all coming in and being segmented in your marketing automation system, your CRM, and you know you can say to your general your your manager who does the call follow ups for catering, here's a list of ten people. Give them a call, right? And right. and uh, now so. What marketing automation does is it it makes it so that you can do a lot of work without a lot of labor, right? right? Sen you're not sending one email to everybody. The system, you configure the system and based on what you're trying to accomplish, you set up your email campaigns uh, to run in the background as much as possible. So there, there's a labor saving element to marketing automation. The right. other really cool thing is that because all of the links that you're sending out are are cataloged and you know that this you know this set of links was coming back from LinkedIn this came from our barbecue soiree uh, at the county fair and these you know from the QR code and, and these uh, set of links came from our email campaigns at the end of the month you run a report and you see wow that uh, County Fair was a, was a home run. We we got three hundred thousand dollars in sales. Um, well, right. If you, if you can tie it in that successfully with uh, uh, back to cop, you know, you can do that more so with a, in a true online e-commerce purchase type situation. It's yeah. not as easy to tie it in and on the restaurant level where they, you know, but if they've got a if they've got a coupon. But yes, yes. I, you, the point is just that you can see some, you can at least see some stats on it. Correct. And you you may not, in some instances, be able to get it down to that individual person, but you can make, you can, if, you, if you're familiar enough with what you're doing to generate your business, you can get at least, an, you know, a good guide of where this traffic's coming from, what things are working. And the goal is using that information is very much like what a media company or a publisher does when they buy Nielsen data. This right. is your data helping you improve your work in the future. So that's the difference. In, and I just was making the key point for marketing automation. It's helping you scale and do less with or do more with less labor. But right. it's also the information that you get back that's so important. Right. And paying attention to that and thinking about it. So, yep. all right. So that's five, six sales model. Sales model. So train your salespeople. Train the person at Connecticut Cowboy to say, hey, if you loved our recipes, sign up for our um, barbecue cookbook. Put, give us your email address and you'll get a PDF of a cookbook. You have, you know, after you make the cookbook and make it into a PDF, you have no production costs and people will love it. And, right. and if you're, But if your salespeople yeah, so don't know to offer it, you're right. never going to get the distribution. So, right. so in the... In the in the Connecticut cowboy uh, scenario, mm -hmm. that salesperson is your cashier yes. and, and your food server. Correct. Primarily, but then also busboy too, because they often interact and, you know, busser, 
et cetera, or just everybody on, on the team should know about these offers and just, you know, so if somebody's, you know, they, they had some barbecue, then they went over to the bar and they got a beer and they're talking about it and they're, God, I really love that recipe. The bartender right. should be, no, to say, here's the QR code, just download it now. Get your, exactly. You know. Right. And, so that's, and, and then that bartender also, because of their unique placement with customers, uh, they may start to hear that, uh, you know, this customer owns a business in town or right. this customer is, uh, you know, a school teacher. Right. And, and so you might then have a, an affinity program for for schools. And that bartender is trained to say, oh, you're a school teacher at, you know, Hillview Elementary. <laughs> here's our here's a little QR code. Uh, you can. Right. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. You can see right? and... the, the, the staff as well and say, hey, <clears throat> if you're talking to somebody and they, they become a customer and we know that you you told them about our catering, we'll we'll cut you in, we'll give you a bonus, whatever. You can know, do take, all kinds of things. Exactly. people. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. All right. And an ROI model. So uh, what does all of this cost you as an entrepreneur? And what is your return? Right. And I on our website, uh, you can see right here, uh, on our website, we have ROI calculator and it's a spreadsheet that I created um, uh, about five or six years ago and we were proposing a marketing program to a company and they came back and said, we have a board member that doesn't really understand how this is going to work. Right. I'm like, hmm. So I have one tab on the spreadsheet that lists everything that we're going to do. Right. down the left hand side and it has months across the top and you plug in how much money you're going to spend each month right. in the spreadsheet you build a, a marketing budget and the second tab is here's the traffic to leads to proposals to sales right right and now i can look at that's got in sales that's called the waterfall right and i know that a hundred a, a thousand people coming to my website can yield a hundred leads, which could yield 10 proposals, which could yield three sales. Right. So for every thousand people that come to my website, I can expect three sales. And a good sales oriented organization knows those numbers, right? right? Any, anybody that's in charge of sales has to know those numbers. Well, the ROI model to do content then is, well, how much is this content going to cost me? And what do I think I could get? And I mean, I've literally been in situations for B2B where you tend to have high ticket sales items. It's like, wow, you mean I could get two sales and I'd pay for the whole program for the year. Bingo. Right? Now for a, a restaurant, you have a marketing budget. You can look at, wow, if I, if I stop doing this in my list of things that I do for marketing and sales and I tried something different, do I think I could get two more sales? Right? So that might only be worth a couple hundred bucks to a restaurant, but there is a, a, an ROI model uh, on your marketing, no matter whether you're a restaurant or a B2B company. Yeah, every, and, right, every every company who's spending money on marketing should have a ROI model so that they know very intellectually, very concretely what their goals and objectives are and working within that and where they want to increase or decrease. Absolutely. That's right. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And um, so it's kind of a back of the napkin, you know, at a smaller business, it's back of the napkin. And when you're dealing with a big business, it, it tends to be more formalized. Um, but if you're, yeah. So at the end of the day, if you are a business owner and you're delegating all this out, what you really care about is the ROI model. Right. Right. Yeah. The boss. The boss and wants to know. The boss. And, boss and wants let, to know the team, she made money. <laughs> let the team go off and work on all these other things. Right. right. And, and so what what marketers tend to do is focus on um, number one through number four. And then you get the IT department to do the marketing automation. And then you got the VP of sales to do the sales model. And the CEO cares about the, the ROI model. And what I've learned is that content marketing is requires all seven of these and it means that you have to take a team uh, approach to being successful right and whether you're just starting out you know you're going to do all these things that's you're right totally brand new and totally entrepreneur and it's just you you know uh working 
Uh, but it's good for you, even if you're just starting out, to know all of these things because eventually you're going to grow and uh, you're going to be a, an effective owner if you understand all of those parts so yep. that you don't get hoodwinked. And well said. You had your hands dirty, you, you can more effectively hire and delegate work to people. And then all you do, you know, all you have to do is sit back and delegate. Well, that, as we know, it takes its, its own toll. And it ain't quite it's, that easy, but it's not you're quite that you're easy, hitting, right? You know, you're, you are hitting <laughs> the nail on the head in terms of the value of this. And, and I literally was standing at a whiteboard working with a client. And at the end of the meeting, they agreed to spend like $250,000 because we talk, We just sat around the table and talked about these. And the executive who was signing off on it was like, yeah, I'm in. All right, perfect. That's what you want. And, um, and right. so now I've probably given this talk 200, 300 times in the last four years. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the publisher's MO, and these are just really good, solid, uh, general information concepts uh now uh and that's what keith's company does and he's got lots of good information on his site um let's uh, toggle back to uh full screen if we would sure you were sharing okay so <clears throat> all right that's pretty cool the publisher's mo i liked how you laid it all out some really solid concepts now um and there's, you know, people can just go to your website and check that out and there'll be yep. links in the, the section below. Uh, so feel free to, you know, follow those and get in touch with uh, Keith. Additionally, you have a, a master's class, right? That goes yeah, really so in depth on this. What I'll say in that, that generosity of the internet, there is the ROI model you can download for free. And there's a book we have for free. And you can also buy our other book on Amazon for, for 12 bucks. And so I, I've really tried to give it's away a, a lot because an educated consumer is my best customer, right? right? And and yet at the same time, I have um, I do consulting and it's very high end. It's market research, SEO research, and then using these seven buckets to help develop a strategy. And that can take ninety days, and it's you know it's not cheap. So we broke it down into a class where. Okay, if you agree these seven buckets, um, you don't have a huge budget, but you want to learn it. We have worksheets that you can fill out and take that those seven buckets down to the next level and and do some exercises and understand and come up with your north star idea. And then we help we have worksheets to help you uh, figure out what your your editorial strategy is going to be. So each of these elements we drill down. And I used to use them in my high-end consulting. And this summer, we spent the time to turn it into a class. So for $1,500, you'll get access to all the worksheets. I've got a 7 to 10 minute lecture for each of these buckets, just like we went through here. And then all of the worksheets we have. Um, so, 70, so 70 minutes for your seven different sections. So, so you know, 70 minutes of some video and, and so forth. So basically yep. in an hour call it an hour and a half to be able to read and, you know, download and blah, blah, blah. So like in it for an hour and a half, you're going to get some really uh, solid information. Can people, if they, well, then the, the key is now the worksheets, right? After you, right. once your brain is around what we're talking about, the worksheets is where the, the actual work comes in. I think I said earlier uh, when we were talking, um, my, my team is encouraging me to call them fun sheets because when I call them worksheets, it's like, ah, nobody wants to do work. But you, right. you can't do this stuff without thinking it through. And I'm, you know, if you're going to invest in having a business and you don't think this through, then, you know, don't complain when you're not successful. This is kind of the basic elements of how to think through a marketing plan. And we've put them online into, into um, uh, Google Sheets. So you just can fill out and add your own information. And then my team is available to, you know, coach you through that as well. well that's going to be my next question. So, like... If somebody does sign up for it and they get stuck, they can contact you. And, and now is that live support or is it 24 seven or is it scheduled or? Yeah, you want to uh, see something really cool? Let's see yeah. if we can do this. All okay. right, I'm going to go back to screen share. All right, so here is the the guts of the masterclass. And you, you, it, you take a class by watching videos and then taking a quiz in each section. Like here's the bucket one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I look at bucket number one, 
there's a video you can watch and some uh, you mark it as complete and you'll get a quiz. Um, the other thing that we've done to answer your, your question is our Publio Learning Center. And we're starting to c play with the name of maybe calling it Publio X, but it is an actual place that you can log into. And when you sign up for the class, you'll get a user ID and you sign into the class and now we have live office hours, one-on-one -on -one sessions, special events and lectures. So we might have you do a talk on SEO okay. and a resource library where we can store materials and articles and things for you. All right. and, and so think of this as sort of like walking into the lobby of a, of a, a, a college campus. Right, right. Right. And there's things that are going on. And so right now we have the selecting the right marketing automation and CRM for your business session going on. And I can join it live. Oh, this meeting's and, happening right now with the, some of your other people? And no, well, it's oh. I, actually I set it up to be able to show you. And oh, I make myself the presenter. And there I am talking to you. And you, as a student, have just arrived and, and can take my class. Cool. And that's all just part of the, the fee. And is this an annual subscription or is this a lifetime? Uh, what is it? The way that we're, you know, we're up just getting this up and running right now. The way we're thinking about it is when you buy the class, you get three one on one sessions and okay. three months of access to this. And you're going to meet other people uh, that are also working on their content strategy. And you can Strategy is a really creative thing and you have kind of brainstorm ideas and you want to be able to test them out with people. What I'd love to do is build a community in here where you get to know the people that are in the in the class with you, in the master class with you. And we're all going through this journey together to make our content strategy work. Right, right. Well, yeah, brainstorming is always good. Like, you know, the Connecticut Cowboy, right? We just came up with that, gave us a context and framework to have our discussion. That's so right. Keith, this yeah. sounds uh, really good. I mean, I already knew this about you and your content. And that's why, um, you know, I invited you to come have an interview. And thanks for, you know, giving me some of your time uh, to do this. Um, I think we're going to uh, basically wrap it up there. If anybody, uh, any, cl any closing words? <laughs> For me? Yes. Um, well, I think one thing I love about this job is that about that third session and people get, getting to know these concepts, people feel stuck. Content strategy tends to be like the hardest right. thing to even do it. And I love the, the, that breakthrough moment, the aha, when somebody like says, I want to be a coach. I'm going to, and our whole content then can hang off of that North Star idea. Right. That breakthrough moment is my favorite part of doing this. All right. That's my closing word. All right, everybody. We were running out of time today. Um, so this was Keith Reynolds with Publio, uh, P U B L I dot I O, and content marketing. He's got a master course, but he's got plenty of free information that you can use to increase your content marketing, which of course plays into search engine marketing and search engine optimization. Uh, if you're really big, awesome, but you can also deploy some of the concepts, uh, really all the concepts, even if you're just a small local business with one or two employees, even if that's just you and your wife or spouse or what have you. Absolutely. So I really um, appreciate the opportunity to think that through with Connecticut Cowboy. I'd never, that was fun. never done it for a small business. And then all of a sudden in the last two days, I've had two opportunities. So thanks a lot, Michael. Yeah, you bet. Um, all right, everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Feel free to reach out to Keith. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike with Sarah.biz, Search Engine Ranking Rules.